Thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, is this too loud or is it okay? Okay, cool. So um, today what we want to talk about is uh, platform engineering and uh, where it um, connects with the open source uh, data technologies. So uh, the, the basis of it is kind of go over both um, what is platform engineering um, as well as I'm sure being here at an open source summit, you ha you know what open source is, but just kind of uh, lay a baseline as well. Again, um, and then how we uh, uh, NetApp's approach for doing platform engineering, um, and at the end of the day, <coughs> before we uh, leave, to go over our offering within Insta, Insta cluster and the acquisition by NetApp. So just overall, but first, you may not be prepared for it. There's a pop quiz. So, um, and then we do have some swag. You're welcome to come by, pick up. I'll, we'll give you free swag. We have uh, some, some nice bottles if, or, or the uh, phone spray cleaners will come provide. So, um, okay, let's start with the first one. Uh, software developed by community with no licensing cost. Anyone? Open source, open source code. You free licensing, you're, you get to use it without having to pay any licensing. That's a great benefit of it. Um, what is the term uh, used when a customer is forced uh, to continue using a product or service regardless of quality? Locking. That's right, vendor locking. Thank you. What methodology combines development and operations? DevOps, see, you're, you're all good at this. So we, do we have enough swag? I think we have enough swag, right? We have, yeah, we're good. We're, we're all good. <laughs> um, what popular open source messaging software was originally developed at LinkedIn? This is kind of a curveball. There we go. Thank you. Last but not least, process eliminates need for developers to learn and operate infrastructure tools and processes. Perfect. Hey, excellent. Yeah. So, so what is uh, platform engineering? Uh, <clears throat> uh, DevOps is the primary methodology for software development these days, uh, where developers are also responsible for some Q, uh, operations, um, QA testing, uh, um, and enables the uh, coordination between the f what is before a siloed different departments, whether it's IT development quality, and now it's one engineer that can take all uh, components from uh, beginning to end, which is quite successful in moving uh, changes quickly and reliably. Um, that does not mean that does not have its own caveats, some challenges that occur. So over time, DevOps has changed. Uh, you know, the first the first hurdle that came up was the cloud being uh, introduced with AWS uh, in 2006 and other cloud providers after that um, to to shift our uh, the DevOps process from doing on-prem to include cloud, um, as well as the cloud changes with <coughs> improvements in availability and scalability. Uh, again, more changes occur. Uh, different tools were um, became about. So developers then had to learn all the different tools that they want to use, whether it's um, Helm chart or Terraform, um, and uh, at, the at the same time still responsible for end-to-end. -end. Um, senior developers um, started managing environments, so they became more infrastructure uh, focused and <clears throat> doing shadow operations. And that's really where the need for an internal development platform uh, came about. So uh, the uh, uh, and the team that will manage that would be the platform engineering team. So it is really an extension of uh, the uh, uh, DevOps. Um, it eliminates the, the need for developers to learn and operate infrastructure. So they focus on the code and um, get testing. And it being uh, self-provisioned becomes a quicker process as well. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, the cycle for development is shortened. Increasing productivity and allows the, um, 
developers to be SMEs on the application itself and not necessarily on the infrastructure. And if you, with platform engineering, you standardize on the uh, process of um, uh, standards on tools and services that are offered. So we, you don't have every developer coming up with a different tool to just, to just solve the same thing. So the, really the, um, the data platform helps with the automa assist with automation of infrastructure so that it's consistent and reliable. It uh, integrates uh, with existing CI/CD processes so that developers can utilize that and uh, provision infrastructure as needed without having to um, deal with underlying components. And con configuration operation tools are shared across the different offerings. And uh, last is that it's essential access for everybody in the company. And with controls for security purposes, you have uh, a shared uh, uh, solution. So this is kind of the uh, Gartner view of uh, platform engineering is uh, you, you do have the center component um, of platform engineering where you're providing uh, 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 reusable components you're providing tools, you provide platform services, and uh, knowledge base. So where developers can leverage all these components, uh, what it does is obfuscates the, the need to deal with infrastructure complexity, uh, deal with a platform, uh, setting up a platform for using these uh, tools. So for a developer, it's really uh, get access through the developer portal. And then uh, once the development cycle is done, then the servers are available through whatever is infrastructure as a service or product a database as a service so it becomes available to the product and service team. That's kind of the stack of the platform engineering. The other side of the, the house is really the uh, open source and where are the benefits here in this case. So going back uh, to 1984, um, Richard Stallman initiated the, uh, the um, Free Software Foundation, which began the open source revolution. Um, a year later, the uh, GPL license came out to, to make sure that uh, the so software is free um, and as well as uh, give uh, um, guidelines in terms of committing and sharing back code into the uh, product. Um, anybody was uh, there at yesterday's keynote by any chance and saw Linus? That was a very cool moment for me, at least. I've never met Linus before, so I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's kind of cool. You, you hear about him, you, you know, you've used the product over for decades, and see so that right there in front of you, so that's kind of cool. So um, he came out with uh, version one of Linux, and um, uh, shortly after that, Netscape with the uh, browser came out with the uh, open source, the term open source for the product. Um, 2003, uh, the Apache web server and Linux OS became mainstream and changes keep happening and the adoption is growing. And we can see from trends in the market that over time we have an increase in adoption of open source licenses, whether it's Apache, GPL, MIT, um, and then a reduction in commercial license. So what are the advantages of open source? Um, from, e from the case of economies of uh, scale, you don't have to uh, pay licensing uh, cost. And it's a faster time to market because you don't have to go through the budget requirements. So yeah, there's a product that you want to use, you can start using it with, uh, without having to go through the financial cycle. Um, and uh, also down the, down the line, there's no uh, vendor lock-in. So if you start using a product, you're not tied to a three, four year license uh, deal that you can't get out of it. And you can adopt uh, whatever technology that you wish to use. From a security point of view, the, really the safety is in numbers with the adoption of these tools with com uh, very large companies like Apple and uh, Netflix who are both contributors and consumers of the product. They are testing these products and the more eyeballs you have on a product, the faster the uh, detection of any uh, issues and quick resolution as well. Um, the intellectual property with open source foundations, there are uh, different flexible licenses that can be adopted. 
Uh, not uh, depending on the use case, you may want to use a GPL or Apache. So there, it's not a one one size fits all. And um, from a scalability and reliability, again, the the number of uh, people who are using these products um, at scale um, makes it easier for companies who are new to open open source to be comfortable that this can be uh, this can support a higher number of users or number uh, amount of load um, and um, uh, the adoption, uh, more, more people who use it, uh, the more robust it becomes. Uh, the communities are thriving, especially uh, larger projects, uh, so any changes that are uh, needed, they are, uh, you can put in where if you don't have the team to make the changes to the product, the other people who may be willing to assist you with that. And uh, currently, there are, this is a bit old of a slide, I think there are over 9,000 committers in the uh, Apache Software Foundation, so there's a an army of people who are there to, to help out. And um, with uh, as far as innovation, there's always new projects uh, coming up. Uh, we're solving issues that have not been resolved before. Um, and uh, many companies have great engineers, but really other engineers exist outside of your company. So they can leverage those resources as well. So what is uh, NetApp's approach to this? So we provide the, the component, which is the um, internal development platform. So we are able to deploy and operate uh, open source data technologies, whether it is Cassandra, the NoSQL database, uh, Postgres as a, re a relational replacement for Oracle, uh, Kafka for messaging, OpenSearch, Redis, um, in addition to the product themselves, for, for all of these, we provide uh, monitoring, backup, restoration, uh, upgrades, patches. And when with these uh, uh, products also uh, in the support model, we provide uh, production uh, ready uh, environments where you have somebody monitoring the system with a 15 minute SLA response time production environment so uh, we do not only uh, provide support where if a machine goes down we bring it up and address it and fix it and let you know that it happened but we also uh, have committers and contributors to these projects so that if there's any bug in the underlying code um, we are able to fix the uh, product and provide you a patch beyond that we contribute back those changes to the open source community we are dedicated to the open source community so none of these products have been modified to by insta cluster in any way that we are actually using the open source product um, so we um, put back any patches that we we apply um, so what that what that gives you the the benefit of any changes that have fixed the, your current version that when you go to the next version of the product that fixes already there in the open source version that you download and, and use. Or for us, when we upgrade your environment to the latest version, you don't have to apply the patch again. So our, surrounding our managed platform, we are able to integrate with other tools, whether it's uh, Terraform for um, in the, um, provisioning the environment, Ansible scripts, Jenkins for uh, jobs to run, Prometheus and Grafana metrics uh, in dashboards. So you can integrate with your existing dashboards in the company. Um, we also, in addition to that, we work with companies that have already um, a data platform where the employees go through um, a centralized website to provision resources. Um, from there, you can modify so your environment to say whenever somebody needs a Cassandra cluster, uh, for example, to call the API for Insta cluster to provision that for the customer. So the look and feel for the employees remains the same, but when it comes down to the data products that are open source, it can be provisioned by uh, Insta cluster, and, um, but it'd be labeled as your own internal product. In addition to that, because we have been uh, around since 2012, we, as a managed service, we do have uh, about 310 million node hours of support. So we know these products in and out. If there's anything that happens in any version, we probably have experienced it. So we are quick to respond if, with, with any questions that you may have, whether it's from a strategy or uh, architecture, design, development, and deployment. So um, in addition to our managed service, we provide 
uh, product support. So if you already are running these tools in-house and you feel the need, the, need, the need to be able to call somebody to resolve an issue 24 by 7, we provide a support-only model. Um, in addition to that, we have consulting services. Again, with the knowledge we've gained on these parts over the years, our consulting team is able to assist you on uh, assessment on whether what's the right product to use um, or uh, improving performance or security. So we would be aim to be the one-stop shop for open source platform engineering uh, for your corporation. As f our platform um, is available through the web. Yeah, it's a similar interface for any of those products. You can see here we have uh, products that we start out with the first one, which is Cassandra, and every uh, year or two we add more products. So you have one single place to go for deploying this infrastructure. We can deploy it on any of the three major clouds as well as on-prem. So if there's a need for non-cloud deployments, uh, we can also do hybrid where a Cassandra cluster can be provisioned on-prem in AWS and Azure at the same time. So this is where we differentiate ourselves from other hyperscalers that we are able to deploy on uh, multiple cloud providers. And all this being pure open source, not a um, uh, open core. So uh, none of these products are um, licensed uh, where we charge license fees. And at any point in time, customers can um, move the uh, deployments to, uh, to be self-managed. So we, we, oh, based on, the, we see the trends in terms of what's being he heavily used. So best of breed, we look at uh, Cassandra for NoSQL, we look at Kafka for messaging, uh, Redis for in-memory storage, um, open source for analytics and AI uh, workloads, uh, and Postgres for relational uh, environments. And these are other components that we, our uh, team works with you to support your automation for DevOps. The um, consulting arm that uh, NetApp has as part of, uh, part of uh, with in, um, InstaCluster, um, I'm part of the consulting team and we help clients in uh, consulting packages. So if you already are using any of those tools, we offer health checks to look at security as well as uh, performance of the environment. And we can help you migrate. So if you're currently in using open uh, core products like Confluent or DataStax, we're able to assist you with migration to open source. So you're not paying uh, licensing fees. Um, our team also offers a remote DBA embedded uh, uh, individuals that can be part of your team for managing the environment, as well as provide custom solutions. And the, and the last piece is we also offer training on any of the products, whether three to five, day for administration or development. So how do we put these components together? So this is kind of an example of, with, we feel that the offerings that we have fit into wherever you're looking for data processing or data storage, we have a solution. So in the case where you have data coming in, uh, AI or some other workload, um, our CAF, uh, the we have a uh, we use Apache, uh, Flink, and other streaming tools that we can um, assist in putting the data into Kafka. Uh, Kafka is a, a scalable uh, environment that we we manage as well, and and based on the amount of data, we can adjust as needed. Um, within Kafka, from Kafka, we can have data be processed through Spark um, uh, for analytics purposes. Um, and then that data is actioned upon through Cadence. Cadence is the um, orchestration and workflow open source product. Um, it's used by, uh, developed by um, uh, Uber, but our uh, client, uh, our largest clients using Cadence currently is DoorDash. So all DoorDash orders um, are going through our Cadence uh, cluster. So we, um, again, uh, scalable as needed uh, for, for DoorDash is a, is a key component of the infrastructure that they, they have. Um, with that same data, we can uh, perform uh, for long term so persistent uh, storage. We have option of NoSQL or relational database. And for faster access, Redis become, uh, is uh, utilized for that. Um, and again, for analytics, um, open source. So really is an ecosystem that provides end to end, whether you need to use analytics or uh, workflow or 
um, just to make sure the data is stored, uh, stored or application need to retrieve data quickly, we have those components. So we can help you build this environment. A bit about uh, background about Insta cluster. So uh, NetApp uh, acquired us a couple years ago. Um, May will be two years. Uh, we were start. Uh, we started in 2012 uh, out of uh, Canberra, Australia, at the ANU campus. Um, currently, we have over 11,000 uh, nodes under management in our platform uh, for the different uh, products, and we're, as mentioned before, we're on multiple uh, platforms. Uh, so we offer the full lifecycle of the product. Uh, both from a SaaS platform that we have, as well as the consulting and support. So, whether any data layer problem, any op uh, we are really focused on operations first because the product itself is free. So, our our offer to you is really operations. Your uh, the reason why you want to come to us and stay with us is really our operations, because beyond that we offer nothing else other than uh, than that. So. We are dedicated to making sure that you're satisfied with the operations and uh, in this environment. And um, every uh, build is tested and uh, certified um, before rolling out. Um, and we maintain a 100% open uh, source code. Some of the customers that we currently have. Um, and there's a few more. That didn't list all 500. But um, and um, then uh, we do have a promotion right now. We are offering, if you're interested, a two-hour open source consulting advice uh, on any of these uh, products, and uh, we offer a free access to our platform so you can test out what it's like to provision uh, these tools. Uh, whether you want to go through the console or use our Terraform uh, resource to be able to provision them right or the API, so it's it, you, know, you can feel free to do to do so. Just uh, let them know that you attended the session here today and you'll get the free trial. And uh, that's it. Thank, thank you. Any uh, questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned um, on one of the slides around sort of having contributors or maintainers on mm -hmm. many or all of these platforms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely both. So I'll give an example. For uh, for Cassandra, um, we had contributors for many years. Or the two founders were contributors to um, Cassandra. Um, since then, we've had one of our employees uh, become a committer. Um, uh, and so he went from in-house becoming a committer because of the amount of uh, commits he did. He was dedicated to making sure the code is maintained. Um, in another case, Postgres, uh, it was an acquisition by Instacluster of a company in Germany called Creditive, who uh, the committer is, um, he was actually here yesterday, Michael Meskes, and he's, uh, we call him the sixth beetle. He was the sixth person in the Postgres project that the, that the five are recognized and he's the sixth. So he's, he's been around for a while and knows the product in, inside and out. So yeah, so to answer your question, both, right? So. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah, another no question? Sure. Well, the, the obvious question is if you're moving to uh, Balkan, how about the support from Redis? Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, just, uh, I was not aware of this. I was uh, upstairs talking to AWS, and they said they're already in communication with uh, our uh, our leadership. So where, where it's going to go, I don't have the idea yet, but I, th I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, it, it's a logical next step, right? So, but, yeah, good question, though. Right, so I can imagine these things being extremely useful because of the complexity of getting them all configured. Mm -hmm. But then there's always something specific, something special, you know, or not always, but often uh, that teams need. 
Yeah, we have many uh, clients who have already their application for provisioning in-house, that their, their employees can go and provision whatever resource that they need. And so we work with, with these corporations making sure that that application, it can be extended to also create the resources within Insta cluster, but not necessarily be seen as a separate, is be embedded into that application that just happens to be another resource. Now we have Cassandra, Postgres, and these other tools you can provision. Yeah. And then uh, we also have uh, backup tools that we also implement in terms of uh, going with the company strategy, whether it's uh, to the cloud or on-prem, and that that also can be, so if somebody can trigger a manual backup, uh, that's an API call. If somebody wants to look at metrics, those are integrated into company dashboards. We expose our metrics to be uh, uh, scanned through Prometheus and with plugins to Datadog and other uh, tools that you can um, have visibility to the performance. Yeah. 